Number 10. The Giant's Graveyard at Malin Head Ireland's most northerly point, the waters off Malin Head, were part of a popular maritime navigation route during the World Wars. Consequently, the region became a graveyard for wartime wrecks. Included among the submerged vehicles is the HMS Audacious, the first British battleship that was lost in World War I. As a super dreadnought built for the Royal Navy, it was a beefed-up version of the 1906 dreadnought design that sparked a pre-war arms race between Britain and Germany. The Audacious was well-armed, but it proved to be no match against the German-laid mine that blew it up in October 2014. The explosion sent the ship plunging 213 feet to the seabed below. Another major wreck that can be found near Malin's Head is the SS Empire Heritage. Originally built as a British whaling ship, it was later converted into a tanker. It was carrying 16,000 tons of fuel and various military vehicles, including Sherman tanks and trucks, in September 1944 when it was struck by a German U-boat torpedo, sending it to its watery grave below. The wreck and the vehicle it took were rediscovered on the seafloor in 1995. They remain at the site today as an eerie reminder of a bygone era that saw countless countries in conflict with one another. Number 9. Million Dollar Point Many of the U.S. attacks against the Japanese during World War II were launched from the island of Espiritu Santo in the Republic of Vanuatu. When the war ended, American forces dumped tons of trash and dozens of vehicles into the waters off the island's coast, including bulldozers, tractors, forklifts, jeeps, and trucks. After a failed attempt to negotiate a deal with locals to buy the equipment, it was deemed more cost-effective to simply discard it rather than to haul it back to the U.S. Since then, the underwater mess has become a popular diving attraction. But some residents and others have misgivings about the decisions to toss perfectly good operational vehicles into the ocean when they could have been donated to the community and put to good use. However, there may be more to the story. It's possible that the U.S. dumped the equipment due to a massive influx of low-cost vehicles into the market which would have threatened the American economy, according to Cabinet Magazine writer Thurston Clark. Either way, it seems like a shocking and sad sight based on Clark's article, which describes how locals watched as Navy CBs drove the vehicles off the end of a purpose-built ramp. Military records from the time failed to convey the magnitude of the dumping, instead claiming that the site consists of a modest amount of ammunition and nothing else. This implies that the Americans perhaps knew that their decision to ditch the equipment was controversial and ethically questionable. Number 8. D-Day Tanks On June 6, 1944, 156,000 Allied troops stormed the coast of Normandy, France in a mission to free France from Nazi control. Famously known as D-Day, it was the largest seaborne invasion in history. The campaign was extremely successful, marking the beginning of the end of the war. But not everything went according to plan. That morning, a fleet of 29 amphibious tanks launched from Allied ships roughly two and a half miles from shore. Known as duplex drive tanks or DD Shermans, the modified tanks were outfitted with flotation devices that enabled them to float. But they were only designed to withstand swells of up to one foot, and those in command had failed to think about the rough seas. The vehicles encountered six-foot waves that they were not built to handle. The drivers did their best to reach dry land, and some came within 0.6 miles of the beach, but only two of the tanks actually made it. In 2000, a group of archaeologists explored the area's waters for the first time and found the submerged machines. They captured footage of the doomed vehicles sitting upright and on their side on the ocean floor, serving as an eerie yet emotional reminder of the links that soldiers go to for their country. Number 7. Train Graveyard While mapping the ocean floor in 1985, diver Paul Helper discovered a sunken train graveyard in the Atlantic Ocean five miles off the Long Branch, New Jersey shore. He had no idea how the two submerged locomotives came to rest under 90 feet of water on the seafloor. The steam engines were identified as rare pre-Civil War Planet Class 222T models dating back to the 1850s. Planet Class 222T locomotives became obsolete shortly after they started being manufactured, so they were only made for a very short time. Although they were powerful for their 15-ton size, they were no match for the 35-ton steam engines that were also being made at the time, and which packed a much larger punch. Their 000 wheel layout was popular in Britain, but was a very rare design for an American train. Oddly, there are no records of the locomotives being built, lost, or dropped into the ocean. They may have fallen, or were perhaps deliberately pushed off a ship barge to prevent the vessel from capsizing in a storm. The trains are reportedly in remarkably good condition after sitting at the bottom of the Atlantic for a century and a half, according to the Daily Mail. But the New Jersey scuba diving website tells a different story, stating that the engineers' cabins and other wooden parts rotted away long ago, leaving just the wheels and boiler barrel behind. In fact, the website describes the trains as really not that great of a dive. 
In 2013, a member of the Philadelphia chapter of the Explorers Club named Dan Lieb teamed up with the New Jersey Museum of Transportation to figure out what, if anything, to do with the locomotives. Nothing seems to have come of it, and they remain on the seafloor today. What do you think should happen with these sunken locomotives? Tell us in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 6. Tangaluma Shipwrecks There's a collection of 15 submerged boats off the Brisbane, Australia coast that resemble some sort of huge maritime crash at first glance. But this was no accident. The Queensland, Australia government deliberately sunk the old dredging ships near Moreton Island between 1963 and 1984 to create a break wall for small boats. Known as the Tangaluma Rex, the vessels became a haven for reef fish and other marine life, and coral is starting to form in and around the submerged vessels. Over 100 fish species are found at the site, which is also visited by dolphins and dugongs. The Tangaluma Rex are becoming increasingly popular among snorkelers and scuba divers, as images on social media capture more people's attention than ever before. Situated in crystal clear tropical waters with high visibility, it's an ideal place for an underwater exploration. The wrecks are sometimes visible above the water during low tide. Morton Island is one of the few inhabited islands near Brisbane, and it's the world's third largest sand island. It lacks paved roads and is a haven for tourists, with the Tangaluma wrecks ranking as its top attraction. Number 5. British World War II Vehicles During World War II, German bombers struck a British merchant navy ship called the SS Thistlegorm, causing it to sink to the bottom of the Red Sea. The vessel had been built just a year earlier, and it only completed three successful voyages. Thistlegorm carried steel rails, aircraft parts, grain, rum, and other cargo throughout her short-lived career. She traveled to the U.S., Argentina, and the West Indies. The vessel departed Glasgow, Scotland for Alexandria, Egypt in 1941, loaded with armored vehicles, motorcycles, trucks, ammo, guns, radio equipment, aircraft and railway parts, and two train locomotives. A crash in the Suez Canal stopped Thistlegorm from passing through, so the ship docked at a safe anchorage off the Egyptian coast. The Germans suspected that Allied troops were hiding on the vessel, so they dispatched two bombers to find and destroy it. Two bombs struck the ship, causing some of its ammunition cargo to explode. Nine people died as Thistlegorm sank to her watery grave. French explorer Jacques Cousteau rediscovered the site during the 1950s. It was soon forgotten about until the early 1990s when the coastal city of Sharm el-Sheikh opened it to divers. The section that was blown off the 420-foot-long ship during the attack created a convenient opening that visitors can use for easy access to the inside, which still contains most of the cargo, including the vehicles. Number 4. Papua New Guinea Tank Graveyard A pair of World War II-era Japanese tanks sat just 13 feet beneath the waves in the waters off Papua New Guinea for 60 years before they were finally rediscovered in 2010. Each vehicle weighs around 15 tons and is equipped with a cannon and two machine guns. They sat untouched in Makeda Harbor until Swiss diver Franco Banfi photographed them following their discovery. Tank warfare turned the war in favor of the Allies by giving them an upper hand in several key battles throughout the conflict, including in the South Pacific. The New Guinea campaign lasted from 1942 until the very end of the war in 1945. It started when the Empire of Japan invaded the Australian territories of Papua and New Guinea. The Allies swiftly retaliated and successfully drove the Japanese out of the region. Japan suffered heavy losses and ultimately came out on the losing end of the campaign. While actual combat played a role in the defeat, the greatest suffering resulted from a naval blockade that kept food and medical supplies from reaching the Japanese soldiers who were stationed in the area. Number 3. Chuk Lagoon Vehicle Graveyard At the bottom of Chuk Lagoon in the Micronesian waters of the South Pacific, there's an eerie graveyard containing a World War II-era ghost fleet of Imperial Japanese ships, planes, and tanks. The vehicle sank in February 1944 during a massive air and sea attack that the U.S. Navy launched against the Japanese known as Operation Hailstorm. It saw the destruction of 270 planes and 45 marine vessels. Japan forged a friendship with Micronesia during the late 19th century when Japanese sailors were first welcomed there. After World War I, the League of Nations revoked Germany's possession of the region and handed jurisdiction over to Japan, which proceeded to turn the islands into a fortified stronghold. Today, the sunken vehicle graveyard at Chuk Lagoon, formerly known as Truk Lagoon, is a popular diving site. The most experienced explorers often spot things they've never seen before, even after making a dozen or so trips to the site. In addition to the dozens of vehicles to be found there, there's a plethora of everyday objects including medicine bottles, plates, and shoes, as well as a myriad of military items such as battery guns, gas masks, and ammunition. Number 2. Military Museum Sometimes vehicles get into accidents and sink. 
but they're also submerged on purpose for a number of reasons. In 2019, Jordanian authorities lowered 19 decommissioned military vehicles into the Red Sea in hopes of attracting tourists to the nearby resort city of Aqaba. The collection of drowned hardware includes tanks, an ambulance, a military crane, a troop carrier, a combat helicopter, an anti-aircraft battery, and several guns. They're arranged in a tactical formation along a coral reef 92 feet underwater. The project was the brainchild of the Akaba Special Economic Zone Authority, ASESA, which has turned to wreck diving in recent years as a way to draw visitors and their money. In fact, most of the wrecks around Akaba were sunk on purpose. The tradition of deliberately scuttling vehicles also stems from the Jordanian royal family's passion for diving, which goes back generations. In 1985, the late King Abdullah ordered the sinking of a Spanish cargo vessel called the Cedar Pride. Three years earlier, an accident had blasted a hole in the ship, leaving a half-submerged eyesore until the king decided it belonged on the sea bottom. An anti-aircraft tank became the second intentionally placed wreck off Aqaba in 1999. There are also a few sunken airplanes, a landing boat, and a crane barge. So if exploring waterlogged vehicles is your thing, Aqaba might be your type of place. Number 1. Saipan Rex Saipan is a commonwealth of the U.S. and the largest of the Mariana Islands. It's located a world away in the western Pacific, roughly 5,900 miles from the American mainland. It's here that a brutal, weeks-long battle between U.S. and Japanese forces, known as the Battle of Saipan, took place from June 15 to July 9, 1944. The skirmish ended with an American victory and the capture of the island from the Japanese. There are numerous historic American and Japanese wrecks off the coast of Saipan, including several Sherman M4 tanks that sit in roughly 10 feet of water in the waters off Chalan Kanoa Beach. The tanks are remarkably intact for their age and are a diving hotspot among tourists. There are also two sunken Japanese planes, two American planes, a handful of merchant ships, some landing vehicles, and other submerged machinery around the island. Divers can explore the submerged vehicles, including the Japanese naval ship Shoan Maru, which sits roughly 30 feet beneath the waves. Most of these attractions are available to entry-level divers. For more experienced visitors, there's an underwater pile of World War II-era junk filled with jeeps, airplane parts, and other items that the U.S. Navy discarded during its time in Saipan. Thanks so much for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.